So we are here asking a listing agent anything. If you are watching and you have questions, please drop them in the box. This is Ken Cross from Seattle. What's up, Ken? Hey, uh, all kinds of stuff is up. Prices are up, income's up, stock's up. Isn't it all great? <laughs> it is all great, man. We just came through the worst year ever. But did, was it really the worst year that ever for you in terms well, of listings? Or? And yeah, between, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah the society, it's, we've been stretched. But uh, but we're doing good now. I think uh, I think everybody's in a great great place. Well, as a society, yes, it was a worse year. But how about for listings? Because so you've done this for how many years? You've been been an agent for thirty five. Thirty five. And in your career, how did last year rank? Because I mean, you you focus primarily on listings for most of your career. Yeah. How did how did last year rank in terms of uh, listings? It was probably out of a scale of one to ten. It was my my worst year in three years. Interesting. So, so I, I listed fewer properties. I, I typically carry a decent inventory of, of homes. And I'll tell you what, just getting homes on the market right now uh, is tough. In fact, we're kind of moving towards as many off market deals as we can do. Okay. Uh, and so a lot of our business last year was off market because there's so many buyers out there, and, you know, our buyers agents are working with them. Uh, and we know when property is coming on the market. So uh, I think, and I've talked to a lot of other agents. Uh, there are a lot of off-market deals happening, uh, much more so than uh, you find in prior markets. Interesting, because there's such low inventory. There's uh, such low inventory. The buyer's right there to snap it up. Got it. And we've got some people watching now. So if you guys have questions, the whole idea of this segment, this is ask a listing agent anything, ask me anything. Uh, if you guys got questions for Ken Cross, I've got the, uh, the Facebook feed open on my other monitor right over, uh, right over there. There it is over there. Um, I've got, I can see, so type your questions in the box as a comment. If you want uh, Facebook to show your, if you want us, we're using StreamYard. So if you want StreamYard to uh, to show your face and your name on the broadcast, Zach, if you could drop the link into the chat so people could approve themselves. Otherwise, just type comments, type questions in there. Anything about listings, where do listings come from? What's his best technique? I mean, how many... How many listings, uh, not, not how many, but where would you say right now is the best source for you for getting listings? That's an interesting question. Um, let me let me preface this by saying that the average listing that I take was somebody I met one year ago. So listings really come through follow-up. I, I think there's this impression that listings are the way you want to go because they're easy. You, you go in, you take the list, and you go home. Everybody else sells the property. Uh, but my listings on average of property are, are people that I've been talking to for over a year. And so when you when you are want to be a listing agent, you've got to invest in uh, your time and energy into the systems to follow up, to nurture and to develop. And you've got to be there for those people for that entire year, because I can't tell you how many times I missed one or two calls and boom, they were out the door with somebody else. I didn't even know where they're coming on the market. Wow. All right. So, so let's, so let's talk about some of those follow-up systems because that, that is a really interesting stat. So if you, the average time it takes you between contact and listing a property is, is about a year. About a year. Wow. I listed a house two days ago that um, I did my market analysis about a year for him. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. So what, so what do you do to, to keep it a, uh, by the way, you have a fan a, this is uh, actually Amy Izzo posted that. Amy said, Ken's awesome. Amy, you're awesome too. Thank you, Amy. Uh, yeah, Amy's awesome too. All right, so yeah. what, uh, how, uh, talk, talk to me about the follow-up systems. Yeah, so uh, really it's, it's all about systems anymore. I mean, you used to be able to, it used to be I could dial the phone 200 times and get paid. All right, I dial 200, I get a hold of 180 to 100, I'd have 20, 25 conversations, I'd set two appointments, I'd get one deal. Now it, it's it's very very different, uh, but the, the technology that is blocking us from getting a hold of people is also enabling us to do far greater numbers. Um, so for the a, a system I just set up is um, a marketing funnel uh, using video, but I created a database of every non-owner occupied property in King and Pierce counties, which was just about ninety thousand properties. Uh, then we run it through for phone numbers. I've got 28,000 um, cell phone numbers and 14,000 uh, uh, primary numbers, landlines, and 15,000 emails. We can now start marketing and targeting to those people um, 
you know, you know, in a way that number one creates credibility, lets them know who we are. Number two establishes some expertise. So we do videos on, on, on different aspects of listing property, things they, I always try to tell people what they don't know, they don't know, right? People don't want you to tell them what they already know. They don't want you to tell them what they don't know, like they're stupid. They want, they want you to tell them something they don't know, they don't know, something that's interesting that gives them an aha reaction. And that helps establish your credibility. And number three, we offer them some of value where they respond uh, by clicking or asking for something or exchanging information where we can then, we're, we're now reaching out to those people instead of doing what the cold calling was in the past where we just call people cold. It doesn't work anymore because you have to go permissions based. Uh, if it's not now, it will be shortly. Uh, you can't call without permission. So, so, so give me some examples because I like that. You got to tell them something they don't know they don't know. What are some examples of things you could tell them that they don't know they don't know? Okay. Um, well, Jesse, you know there's a foreclosure more. Uh, there's a foreclosure and a rent uh, eviction moratorium, right? Yep. You know that, all right? Um, and, and I'm going to tell you something you didn't know. Uh, you know, did you did you know that if some rent if tenants not paying rent that you can't you can't kick them out? I didn't know that. Yeah. But what you don't know, you don't know is that in the proclamation that Jay Inslee put out, the the moratorium is actually a moratorium on eviction for non-payment. So if you make a declaration that I'm moving into the house or that I'm selling the house, I can give a 60 day notice and I can get you out of that rental house where the tenant's not paying rent or where you're coming up to the two year limit on your five years to you know, uh, sell a house as an owner-occupied property or whatever other reason you have for wanting to sell a property. Huh. I love it. Tell them what they don't know they don't know. And so that's <laughs> one of the videos that we did that's going out to now the the 90,000 uh, 90, non-owner-occupied properties in King and Pierce counties. I, I love it. All right, and so Zach's got a question here. And if you guys do have questions, please type in the box. The whole idea here is um, I want to know what questions you guys have, because this is ask me anything or ask a listing agent anything, right? Ken lists a ton of houses for a long time. So this is a good got a chance to ask him anything. All right. So Zach's question was, and Zach, you have to clarify what this was about. Zach said, um, what type of drip campaigns do you run for that? Are you talking about Zach long-term follow-up? What type of drip campaigns is, is he, uh, is he running? Um, when you're talking about drip campaigns, uh, it used, that used to mean email. But now it's email and text. And um, so now it's video email, video text, video, you know, text and email. So I, I think you have to run a, a combination of those things. So you run emails to answer questions, you run text for identification. You don't send videos to people that you haven't talked to. <laughs> it's creepy. All right. So don't don't creep people out with the hey, I'm Ken, I'm gonna be your guy. All right. <laughs> That doesn't work. Will you do that again, Ken? I, I, <laughs> yeah. Are you recording this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you have to you have to be really diligent about how you approach people these days. So again, you you've got to pique their curiosity and offer them something of value in terms of knowledge and information. Get them something something they want. The reason I'm doing the database marketing is I've got a database now of of landlords and landlords all have a, a, a common set of unique interests and concerns. And so we're addressing those concerns. Now, if you were marketing just out to the general population on Facebook uh, or any, any multimedia, uh, Facebook or Google or LinkedIn or wherever, um, you you'd want to start, you want to uh, your target audience to identify themselves. So once you establish yourself as I'm, hey, I'm Ken Kratz, I'm a real estate broker, been at it for 35 years in the Seattle market, and I've done over 2,000 transactions, the next message might come out, you know, if you thought about moving, every, I can show you where to get uh, all the moving boxes you need for free. Don't go to Home Depot, they're overpriced. So, you know, click down here and I'll, and I'll give you the list of places where you can go to get all moving boxes for free. Or another one might be, uh, I'll show you how to increase the value of your house by a thousand dollars in one weekend for less than a hundred bucks. Right? Anybody that clicks on that is somebody that's thinking about moving. So you don't want to say, "I want to help you move." You want to you want to address the concerns and that they have because 
They want to know how to turn off our utilities and find moving boxes and all right. that. In that one year time period. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, yeah. While we're waiting for any more questions, that was a great question. By the way, Paul Perone, if you're still watching, Paul, Paul also said that you're awesome. You've got fans, man. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. Paul's awesome too. All right. So if, uh, if someone was just starting out and, or let's say, how about this? Let's say we took Ken Krotz and we took him out of Seattle and we dropped you in a random city in America. What would be your first thing you would do if you wanted to build a listing inventory again? What would be the first thing you would do? Uh, I'd go after every first sale by owner I could find. There's not many today, but there are some. I'd call any expired that I could find because those are people that you know want to sell. There's nothing closer to a sale than somebody who's already raised their hand, already raised their hand and made commitments to do so. So I'd start there. Okay. All right. Uh, then uh, I would I'd immediately go to my title company and start establishing databases of either geographic farms, uh, neighborhoods, uh, or, and, and look for people that have been there for 10 years or more. Uh, look for people that you know, that are in, have a certain spread uh, between the assessed value and the uh, market value of the property, if you can tell that, or, or the mortgage and the assessed value. So you find people who have equity. Yep and uh, start targeting them. And then I would go into big databases. I, you know, not owner occupied um, and start uh, social media marketing to them and get visible, get visible right away. That was, that was a, by the way, those of you watching, I hope you wrote that down because that was a lot of really good strategies in like two and a half minutes. All right, so we want, we want to go back and unpack one of them. Amy is asking, Amy Izzo wanted to know, um, oh, and Amy, if you go to the uh, streamyard.com slash Facebook, Zach put that, uh, that link in the chat, streamyard.com slash Facebook. Here, I'll put that one up on the uh, on the screen. That one, if you go to streamyard.com slash Facebook, you can approve yourself as a StreamYard person so we can show your, your name on here right now. All right, so here we go. It just says Facebook user. So this is Amy's question. She said, what's your approach with expireds, Ken? Uh, I love expireds. So you know why? They why? do what doesn't work. They've okay. already screwed up and hired the wrong person or stuck to a too high of a price. So, so with expired, uh, expired listings, I uh, understand that they are motivated and, uh, the hard part is getting, getting the appointment. The easy part is taking the listing. So, uh, so you have number one, you have to be empathetic, find out why they're moving, uh, what they feel didn't work right with the, with the last listing. And, um, and I, I use a pretty specific script to go down and, you know, it, it, when you move, where are you planning on moving to? How soon do you want to be there? And what are you looking for in the next agent that you hire? And find out really what they're after, what their need is, and then go in there and show them how you're going to address that need and get their house sold. And, and the, the thing is, too, if, if, if it was a pricing issue, and this, that's not an issue in this market, but it will be soon. Um, if it's a pricing issue, uh, they're going to be a lot softer to it because usually they, I, I don't know how many times I've gone in and they say, my agent, we couldn't, we, we thought the price was too high, but they never wanted to bring it down. And it's just an agent that didn't want to have that perceived confrontation about price thinking maybe that the seller is going to stick their, their heels in the sand. So a lot. And so, so that script, is that a, uh, cause I know some of the original expired scripts that I learned were from Mike Ferry years and years yeah, ago. Yeah. Is, is it a Mike Ferry script pulled from that? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I scripts for me are a, are a roadmap. I'm not hardcore on it because you always, you always, you always go off on uh, onto a tangent about something they're interested in, something you're interested in. You're making that common bond and building a relationship, uh, but the script gets you to to your destination, and so it's important to internalize it. And when I say internalize it, uh, you need to be it just needs to be naturally what comes out from you when you're in front of somebody like that. Um, once you internalize it, that's the thing with scripts. You can memorize them, you can read them, and memorizing and reading don't work really well because you're thinking about reading. You're thinking about what to say next. When you internalize something, it, it turns off that voice in your head and turns your ears on. And once you start hearing people, then you start understanding what their needs are and you can address them. Until that point, you're too busy listening to yourself and not to them. And it's all about them. It's not about you. 
I, I love I love that, dude. I was just gonna type it up, put it on the screen. Turn off the voice in your head and turn the ear, turn your ears on. Mm-hmm. Make that up. I don't know. Is that a kind of original. <laughs> I've been I've been, I've had so many trainers and read so many books. It's come from someplace. I, I love it. I mean, here it goes. Uh, and here's one of the things: if you want to be, a, here's something. Here's a message that I really during this time wanted to convey and probably one of the things that has held me back more than anything else over 35 years. And that is, um, long don't said it, um, systems run businesses and, and people run systems. And as agents, as an agent, I'm very impatient. And I've always tried to hire people to run my business without having systems or hire people to build the systems to run my business. And that's never, ever worked. Uh, if you want to be a listing agent, be able to stay in front of people for an entire year, or even a buyer's agent and have a smooth running business, you have to do the nitty gritty work of develop, of, of writing out and developing your systems. You have to design and set up the system and then plug somebody in that will run something that you put together. Uh, now, I know that there's probably people that found the miracle person that did it all for him, but I, I've never found that person. I probably hired 50 people. So uh, we just put together a video system, but I, I learned how to edit video in order to hire people that edit videos. And I learned to do Facebook ad management in order to hire somebody that does Facebook ad management. And, uh, and it's working now. But we had to put that system together. I had to put the system together myself and understand it before I could plug somebody else into it. And it's the hardest thing to do for salespeople to sit down and do the nitty gritty planning, writing out everything. But if you can do that, it will pay huge di- dividends. It will free you up. Yeah. I, lo- I love that, Ken. Re- re- yeah. It really is good. Um, trying to set up a system of something you don't know how to do is very, very challenging. Uh, g- going back, by the way, a minute, Sarah, Sarah Martin is who's watching. She definitely agreed with you, by the way. Two years, one mouth. There's, exactly. a we're built, there's a reason we are built that way. Yeah. So, all right. So, so, and if you, we got a few minutes left on this one, guys, if you got uh, questions on systems, businesses, expired, Sarah, here we go. Sarah, ready? Sarah asked, I mean, put this up. How do you, how do you take the time, Ken, to build the systems while still being in production at a high level? That is, that is a challenge. How do you do that, Ken? You work your tail off. Uh, you time manage. Uh, but you know, you don't, you don't watch the clock. I have a Pomodoro timer that I put on my, uh, on my um, screen, so that helps. Okay, talk to us about that in case people don't know what Pomodoro okay. time is. Uh, the Pomodoro uh, theory or the Pomodoro process is, is you, you work on something for 25 minutes, full focus, no distractions, no phones, no emails. No, you focus on a particular task for 25 minutes, and then you take a five minute break. And then you can go on to something else or even re-engage that activity. But uh, you, you take in 25 minutes focus sessions and that really, really helped me. I'm a little ADD, so um, having that timer up there was really helpful and permission to put the phone away and not look at email and all that stuff. That really helps you build those systems. And I know for, yeah, again, just for myself, when I'm in the zone, I can really focus really well. And, and the Pomodoro, process has really helped me do that because I'm super productive when I can focus without distraction. It's just that every five minute distraction that, that kills your after a whole day. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting. And so you actually put the, um, cause I've done it with a physical Pomodoro, like the little tomato timer. Right, that's, where right. name, that's where the name, the Pomodoro technique comes from, by the way, is from that tomato timer, the little tomato right. timer. Yeah. It's the original. Uh, I think it's where the name is where I've been told it comes from. Where, yeah. do, you, do you have it on your it built into your screen? Is there like an yeah? App it's, just a, it's just a little app up on the upper upper right corner of my top screen. That's awesome. Yeah, and it makes the most annoying alarm. So it pretty much stops you. From, <laughs> you can't can't fo- after twenty five minutes. It stops, and, and twenty five minutes goes by really fast. But if you're focused, you really do get a lot done. I mean, we are so distracted right now. Yeah. We, we really are. I think we're actually talking about that uh, next Monday. We were talking about today, next Monday on Agent Power Huddle. So if you want to jump on with us, we're talking about uh, strategies to stay focused. So we will absolutely uh, cover Pomodoro technique, among other things, because yeah, helps. this is a highly distracted life we live. <laughs> highly distracted. Yeah. <laughs> guess- one, of our, one of our big challenges right now is we have uh, so many leads coming in from so many different systems. 
Uh, and Facebook is so complicated. Every, you know, just getting it all into one system that works that alerts you properly without over alerting you to things you don't need. So managing your alert is, is really a, an important thing towards your, to maintaining your focus as well. Ooh. All right. So, so we guys, we have time, by the way, probably about one more question. If you got one more you want to ask. So tell while we're waiting for another question, Ken, tell me about that. When you say managing your alerts, because I don't know if people, a lot of people take the time to do that. What do you mean by managing your alerts? Well, um, you know, I have a VRBO business. I have uh, the, the real estate business and uh, we run ads and those, those, assist, those alerts come in through messenger and I get three or four different messengers, uh, um, channels coming in and then uh, you also get a bunch of alerts like somebody's commented on something you're following you got to get rid of those uh, and then you have your text and you have your, I have two emails and I have a phone and we have you know people calling in um, and Lord knows how many other channels we have coming in um, you have to manage that and if you can get it into one system I'm still looking for that that uh, perfect app that will manage all of my alerts into one location, <laughs> that would be a dream. Um, and be able to manage and send them back out to the people that need right. them. All in one platform. I Someone told me that I'm blanking on the name. There was one that manages social media alerts from a different bunch of different platforms. I think there's a few social media platforms that do that. And I'm blanking on the name of this one. Were you on that call when someone gave us th that system? I uh, know. I don't, I don't know. That was Monday. Was that Monday? I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll, I'll get you the name of it, but it's only from social media platforms. So it's, it's not going to do from ever from phone calls and inbound. That's messages. right. Social media is a, uh, social media is a good one to get your arms around. Yeah. Cause you know what, uh, if you, yeah, you know, it, aside from your regular personal Facebook stuff, if you're advertising on social media, uh, you, you can blow the doors off the uh, incoming lead sources. Very quickly. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, because everyone who comments on one of your posts is a potential lead. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, anybody who likes a video, anybody who comments on it, anybody who uh, you know asks for something in particular, and you know, th there's three different types of leads coming in from one source, and I have them come in from the Sasquatch Lodge and from Ken Crowds and Company, from from you know, Crushing Northwest Real Estate. You know, all those come into one place, and uh, Facebook is not very well organized to manage that. Yeah. Never yeah. Well, any, any last words, anything? This has been fun. Those of you guys watching, I hope you enjoyed this. And any last words before we wrap this up, Ken, anything you want to leave people with? Yeah, it's still hard work. Nothing's changed about that. So the people that, so the people that make it have grit and, uh, and you have some discipline. So, you know what, none of these, uh, nothing you, but no shiny object you see is going to create a workless, successful career. I've tried them all. I know. <laughs> I feel that every one of them, you still have to get up every morning and work. And so, you know, revel in work. Work is the, the thing that will free your life. It builds relationships, builds wealth. It creates a, a spiritual life. Work at everything and revel in it. I love it. I love it, Ken. Well, guys, if you have questions for Ken Kratz in Seattle or referrals to send to him or anything, um, he is tagged in this post. So uh, send him a message. He will happily, happy to chat with anybody, right? Can they just direct message you in one of your many yeah. channels? All right, cool. All right, enjoy your day, guys. Bye, right, everybody. See you, See you later. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.